Okay, they're going to equal some value. And so it'll be a second order differential equation, just like before, in that it's x double prime. I'm going to do a nice one, one that factors easily, because I want this side to be kind of a cakewalk. The other side's going to be messy enough for everybody to deal with. So sine of t plus 3, uh, no, sine of t, I'm just going to do sine of t, sure, sine of t, just because I feel like it. Mm -hmm. Just because I just because I can, that's why. <coughs> now, what does this say to me? What this says to me is this: this if this side were all forces, okay, so forces obviously must equal force, yes. So we'll often refer to this as a driving force. We're driving this system with some force over here. So in this case, we're just pushing up and down the back of a car, perhaps like this number, right? But we can do a variety of things. Don't get too hung up on what does this mean. Like in a minute, I might throw. Like e to the x over here, like, you're pushing on my car with an exponentially increasing force for, just relax, dude. Okay, that's how the problems get set up. You get too carried away with it, it gets off, it's off track, okay, in a hurry. Um, my algebra one kids, I always used to do y equals mx plus b. We talk about it, it's the cost of a, a taco and a big pop. But the first time the big pop came out to be negative, it freaked them out. How do you cost negative $10 for a pop? It's an analogy, people. Just roll with it, okay? Okay, so what's going to happen is this. We are going to solve this side when it's equal to zero, just like we did before. And we will get ourselves a complementary solution, just like before. We are going to solve this side and we're going to get what's called a particular solution. And so our final answer will be the sum of those two solutions. That's the game. Right? So later on when we get to Laplace, we're going to see a lot of this sort of function. And when you solve it, it Laplace will just come up with an answer period. And you're like, well, that's cool, I guess. Where'd that come from? But when we get there, my goal in teaching this section is so that when you get the answer in the plus, it'll be, it'll just be x equals blah. But you should be able to look down here and go, oh, that's the complementary solution. I see it. Oh, I see this part over here must be the particular solution. Okay, that's why I teach this section the way I do. Otherwise, I wouldn't do it at all. And again, make sure when you go home, I only assign the parts that say undetermined coefficients. There's also another a tool called variation of parameters. Do not do that. That is a horrible, awful, god-awful, disgusting, gross way to do it. Just stop. Just don't do it that way, okay? So I only show this way because it's probably the easiest of these two methods. And again, I just want you to understand that when we get to Laplace later on and a couple other methods we're going to look at that are more commonly used, it's just going to spit out x equals, but I need you to be able to look from here and see which side, which solution came from which piece up there. That's kind of the point of this, this exercise that we're going to do. All right, so first things first. All right, so first things first, we are going to do this. We need to have some initial conditions. It's kind of a big deal. So our initial conditions will be something of the order of, oops, x of 0 is 4. always ask on a test if you see it. Sometimes I'll skip, uh, sometimes I'll just forget about the x prime. I didn't mean to, but I, sometimes I do and just ask. But usually I just, I just do an order and whatever. Don't freak out if you see that. All right, so here's what we're going to do. First and foremost of all, we are going to do the particular solution first. So the particular solution first. Okay. Now, when I do that, when I do that, I need to look at it like this. All right, so here's the particular solution. I know that I have some function x that when I take its derivative and its second derivative and add it together in this fashion, all I'm left with is sine. Yes? What possible function could it be? Well, we can all agree it's not x squared. Okay? It's not, it's not a t squared. It's not... Uh, it, or it's, yeah, it's not t squared, it's not, uh, it's not e to the t, it's not anything other than it's got to be some sines and cosines, yes? 
And so here's the game. If this guy has an x, an x prime, and an x double prime, your solution has to be of the format a sine, or well, I should say a cosine. Your book always writes cosine first. A cosine t plus b sine t. These are the undetermined coefficients a and b. I'm going to go find them momentarily. Notice that this had been sine of 2t. These would be 2t's in here, yes? So go with whatever we got. Well, this looks very similar to the first night of class. The first night of class, you were asked to what? Show that this is truly a solution, yes? So we had to find x prime. So what is x prime? It's negative a sine t plus b cosine t. And then x double prime is negative a cosine t plus or minus b sine t. Make sure I was in the right section. I guess what I said. Yes, 3.5. Yeah, yeah, buddy. Cool, 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 cool. All right, we good? That good? That worked for us? All right, cool. So here we have that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. All right, so what do we get when you have this problem? So now I'm going to use this stuff here with the recipe over there, yes? So if I plug it back into the recipe, I'm going to have this guy. Negative A cosine of T minus B sine T. That's this guy. Plus three times this fella plus, by the way this is the easier one by far I cannot stress to you the other one is so much more convoluted it's not even funny so you're thinking this one's mess you just just yeah that one's way worse Okay, so what is this supposed to equal? It's supposed to equal one sine of t. When it's all said and done, it's supposed to equal one sine of t over here. Okay? Now, let's, uh, let's distribute, shall we? Let's distribute and then let's collect our sines and our cosines together, okay? So, when I do this next step, I'm just gonna go, all right, so I got a negative a cosine of t, and down here, I'm going to write a negative b sine of t, because I'm going to collect my sines and my cosines together. Are you with me? Right. And then I'm going to have a negative 3a sine from right here, and plus a 3b cosine plus a 2a cosine plus a 2b sine of t. And again, the game is I want to combine my sines and my cosine. Now, these are still added together, okay? They're still added together, but I'm going to separate them out. And when it's all done, it needs to equal one sine and how many cosines? Zero. Zero. So when I think about it, over here, negative a plus 3b plus 2a must equal 0 because there are no cosines, yes? So negative a plus 3b plus 2a must equal 0 because there are no cosines on the other side. And then negative b minus 3a plus 2b must equal one because there's exactly one sign on the other side. Well, this is pretty straightforward, I think. That means this is going to be equal to negative A plus three B equals a goose egg. And negative three A plus B equal one. I know, let's times the top by three. Anyway, or graph it. 
or your favorite version of this, I don't care. So if I add, they go away. This is 10B equals one. So B equals 0.1, right? And if you plug it back in, you get negative A plus 0.3 right here, 3B is equal to zero. So then A is equal to 0.3. And again, you could have graphed it, and I would have been just as happy if you had taken these two equations and graphed them in Desmos. They would have crossed at A equals 0.3, B equals 0.1. Yeah? What is the negative A? Should I just be just A? Right here. You did negative A plus 2A. Yeah. They wrote negative A. <coughs> <Over. coughs> okay, so I can't do algebra. Let's try again. My apologies. I just teach algebra for a living, for God's sake. You'd think I know how to do it. All right, let's try it again. So negative A plus A, yes, there you go. That's key. So, is that right? What? No, I know. Is that right? I hadn't started. Am I feel good now? Okay, so where are you at? So right here, I put all my cosines together, yes? So cosines on this side equal cosines on this side. There aren't any. So all the coefficients I have to add up to zero. And all the sine coefficients I have to add up to one. Yeah. So I just combine them when I get to here, and of course I screwed up a minute ago, whatever. So now I solve this equation, right? Now what do I get? I don't know. I'll just, oops, stop it. Go away. I'm gonna get 3a this time. So 3a plus 9b. Oh, isn't that funny? It's only the same because I screwed up when I solved it. What an idiot. What an idiot. But whatever. Okay. Mr. Groom, I did it the other way you said, and I still got the same answer because you screwed it up wrong twice last time. Awesome. All right. Here we go. So I add, and these got, it's this time of night when a fellow really should probably break out the Desmos and just freaking graph it. Okay. But you do you. So do that. Do that. Equals that. I get B is equal to 0.1. Where are you at? Where are you at? Why, why are you multiplying the first Oh, I, okay, okay, okay. Why are you just giving the three through this? Like, why is, where did that three come from? Okay, because I'm doing elimination, and I want my A's to be the same so that you eliminate. Oh, okay. But you're like, I don't want to do it that way. Get your Desmos out, or get your TI calculator out, and then you can do this on your calculator. Solve, and I'm just going to use X plus 3Y equals zero. I'm going to use the word and. I'll show you where to find that momentarily. Plus y equal one comma squiggly brackets x comma y squiggly brackets parentheses. Or you can use simultaneous. I I, I like this method because it works pretty cool for other stuff too. But whatever the the and you will find the and second number five eight eight. That's where it's hiding. It's also in the catalog whatever you can do it this way I seem like a lot of sugar for a cent <coughs> so in theory I should be able to solve that one by hand or I'm probably just gonna freaking graph it that's just me you do you though okay in theory it should work either way and we should be good to go <laughs> okay but again if, if if you like me have a hard time with algebra at a certain time of night just just graph the thing okay that's not the purpose of this class right it worked People on the 89, you trying it? You like it? Just throw it in the matrix. All right, throw it in the matrix. There's literally 87 ways to solve this problem. Knock yourself out. It's point 0.3 and point 0.1, right? That's what I got. Okay. Negative? Three. Negative point 0.3 because I had dropped the sign around. That's right. So negative point 0.3. So x equal negative point, or a equals negative point 0.3. B equals positive point 0.1. Okay, so my particular solution is equal to negative 0.3 cosine t plus 0.1 sine t. And we're not going to do it, but we could do this again, couldn't we? <coughs> but we're not going to. I've had enough of that foolishness for one night. Okay? Now, so let's go find our complementary solution. So our complementary solution is, of course, going to be the solution to this guy. 
always set are equal to zero. See you later, man. Uh, this is recorded, so if you want to watch the rest of it tonight, it'll be online. Okay. So r squared plus 3r plus 2, r plus 2, r plus 1. So r is negative 1, negative 2. So my complementary solution is going to be c1 e to the negative t plus c2 e to the negative 2 t. By the way, you'll notice that we did not use we did not use our our uh, co our uh, initial conditions with the particular solution, did we? They <laughs> they have nothing to do with that one. Nothing at all. Which is kind of kind of a neat <coughs> slash weird deal. Okay. <coughs> okay, so what were my initial conditions? What were the initial conditions this time? Zero, four. So four equals C one plus C two. And the derivative one was zero and two. Oh, zero and two, right on. So then two. And then my derivative is going to be negative c1 minus 2 c2, right? I don't really need to write the full derivative out. You take the derivative of this guy to be negative 1 times this guy, yes? And then you put 0 in, it's just going to be this. Ditto here. Right? Okay? And then this one's nice because the c1s go away when you add. So you get 6 equals negative c2. c2 is negative 6 which means C1 is 10, right? <coughs> All right, let's try this thing. What's our final solution then? Not that final solution. The total solution is 10. Sometimes you just wonder when stuff happens. You just, stuff comes out of your mouth. You're like, what the hell did you just say? What did you just say? The other day, some kid said something and it was recorded and I didn't even listen to it until later and I'm like, how the hell did that get on there? I don't even know. Here we go. So 10 e to the negative t. And then what? Minus 6 e to the negative 2t. That's my complementary piece. And then what's my particular solution? Is it 0 0.3? 0 0.3 cosine point, or cosine t plus, is it negative? Is it negative 0.3? It's negative 0.3. And positive 0.1 <coughs> sine t. That just sounded weird. I thought I'd have to clarify. There you go. And this part right here, your particular solution. Okay? So again, as I say, later on when you learn Laplace, Laplace will just spit that answer out. And I want you, later on when we get there, to be able to go, oh, this part that's sine and cosine <coughs> came from the particular solution side, obviously, because it was sine. And this stuff over here, this e to the negative t and e to the negative 2t, came from the complementary side. I want that to be crystal clear when we get there. Okay? okay. And that, literally, that is the solution to this problem. That's it. You're done. It only took 20 minutes or better. <laughs> With Laplace, I had it whipped out in about you know, 10, like less than 10 minutes. Easy. Five minutes, probably. It's about as fast as I can type it into Betsy with it really boils down to. Because Laplace boils down, Laplace really boils down to a giant algebra problem. That's what it really boils down to. And why did they do that? They did it that way so that, back in the day, hey, calculus is hard to get a calculator to do calculus. But doing, doing algebra is pretty freaking easy to do in the grand scheme of things. And so it's kind of a cute trick that it works out that way. But it's really a straightforward deal in terms of what you did. So really, when I get down later on, it's going to be, <coughs> geez, just an algebra problem. Hey, I feel like we're doing a lot of, of uh, partial fractions. Remember doing those back in the day? Yeah. We're going to do a ton of those later on, which is really just an algebra problem. And so that, that's kind of the deal going forward. But that's really all this was, too, if you think about it. I mean, we did a little derivatives first, but we did a bunch of freaking algebra to put this thing together and a little bit of logic. And we end up with <coughs> this solution. And then again, you're like, am I right? I don't know. Go graph it. Let's see what happens. By the way, what does this function look like really close to zero? 
When you're really close to zero, who is driving the train here? Is it the E's or is it the cosines and the sines? <coughs> Near zero, I'm going to argue it's the E's. That's right around zero, those guys are driving the train. Look at the coefficients. It's 10 and 6. Those are pretty big numbers. And right near zero, like for instance at zero, e to the zero, you're going to get 10 and negative 6, yes? Now what's going to happen at t equals zero over here? The sine goes away. The cosine is going to give us a 0.3 action, yes? But as time goes on, what's going to happen to the e to the negative t routines over there? Bye bye And what's going to happen with these sines and cosines? It's going to do this thing for... Yes? And so what we're going to see later on is we're going to actually call these some pretty cool ideas. This is what is referred to as your steady, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, your steady state solution. It's what happens as time goes on. It tends to be this deal over here. But early on, this guy here is what we call a transient solution. The idea that it drops off quickly and goes away. Okay? Later on, actually, when we get to RLC circuits, we'll actually talk about that being a transient current. It's there initially, and then it just transients itself away. Goodbye. It fades off into infinity. Or to zero, I should say. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's look and see if that's true. Um, just want to graph it. Just let me graph you. So 10 e to the negative x my minus 6 e to the negative 2x <coughs> minus 0.3 cosine. Uh, what is it? 1, just x? Yeah. And then plus 0.1, oops. Yeah, look at that. Near zero, the E's are winning. Yes? The E's are doing the driving. But look, as time goes on, what's happening? Over here, can you even see them anymore? All you see over here is just this nice cute cosine or sine function happening, yes? And it drops off pretty rapidly. So like, you pretty much don't see it anymore at all after right about here, yeah? I mean, you can kind of visualize from about right here on, that is just, well, mm -hmm. Somewhere in this neighborhood, you're not seeing hardly any of it anymore at all, right? Yeah. And by the way, if you graph just the E's first, that's where they pretty much drop off to zero, is right there where it tends to go away, yeah? And so, you know, later on when you get to applied stuff, we won't actually do it in this part of the class, but in, in an electronics class, you'll want to know, well, when is the transient solution, when is it basically all gone? It's never all gone. It's gone somewhere right around here, T equals a couple of seconds, three or four seconds. And then we get this nice steady state solution that runs forever, just like that. Okay. Let's do another one, shall we? Now, again, we're not going to do a zillion of these. Okay, so I, you know, in the old days, you'd memorize these giant tables. If your particular solution looks like this, you should start with this. Mm. We will talk about this is a good idea, or this is a thing, or this is a whatever. We're not going to get all ridiculous about them, okay? And if you're ever lost, it's on page, they give you a small, on page 191, they give you a small, if your f of x looks like this, your particular solution should look something like this, probs, okay? On page 191, I want to say there's another little part somewhere too, but I don't see it, so not a big deal. Um, going to do one here for us. <laughs> Uh, da -da 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 -da. I just did one like that. How about that fella? Good, cool. So, <coughs> y double prime plus, no, yeah, what, no, where'd it go? No, oh, I'm sorry, I lied to you. Y. Uh-oh, that's a fourth derivative. How many initial conditions would a person have to have? Three. Three, does that sound right? Four, four, three, I don't know. Clearly I need this guy, right? 
So I don't know. Let's think about this. So I, clearly, I need x. Well, let's think. So if I was at second order, I needed two, right? Right. Third order, I probably ought to have three. So fourth order, I should have. Should I have four? I think so. So x of zero is. I'm using this one right out of the book. X of zero is equal to x prime of zero. Your book does this. It annoys the bejesus out of me. I'll have to be honest with you. Look at that. Your displacement equals your velocity. B.S. Okay? That drives me nuts. What they're saying is the numbers are the same. Okay? But it drives me a little bonkers because this crap matters. All right? Units matter. So your displacement doesn't really equal your velocity. But the, the magnitude, one and one, that's what it's talking about. It just bugs me the way they write it, though. And I'm not a person that gets bugged by easily by things. And then x double prime is equal to x triple prime, which is equal to wow, negative. <laughs> yeah. Basically, because I think they run out of book space is why they do it. They charge it off for it. They just put it in there. <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. All right. Okay, so listen, if your fourth derivative, if your fourth derivative has an x squared in it, hmm, so wait a minute. I don't know what my, I don't know what my initial condition, okay, let me back up here. I don't know what my x is this time, yes? On the last one I had x, x prime and x double prime, yes? And it equaled sine. So I was like, well, sine and cosine, that makes sense. However, my second derivative and my fourth derivative must contain an x squared. So what is the smallest function you could possibly have in order to end up with an x squared? I don't know. What do you think? So x cubed? Well, if it was x cubed and you took the second derivative, you'd have a x. That's not bueno. If you had x to the fourth, second derivative would get you an x squared. That's okay. And then you're like, but Jay, I have to take an x to the, I have to take a fourth derivative too. That, you're right, you do have to take a fourth derivative. So I have to take a fourth derivative, then I'm thinking to myself, well, wait a minute. If I have to take a fourth derivative, uh, and that could be zero. It could very well be zero, the last one, couldn't it? The fourth derivative could very well be zero on that guy. I could end up with it. For instance, if I had x to the fourth, If I, had, if I had a certain x to the fourth problem, let me put it that way, if I had a certain x to the fourth problem, it's possible to make an x to the fourth problem where the second derivative is negative one-fourth x squared, correct? That would be possible, correct? I think so. And so negative one-fourth times negative four is positive one x squared, correct? And it's possible that, that same function I started with has a fourth derivative that's equal to zero, isn't it? I feel like that's totally possible. Jay, what about all the other terms? What about them, friend? What about them? Should we account for them? Probably. Will they probably cancel out anyways? Probably. So am I too worried about it? Not too worried about it, okay? So we're gonna work this out. These ones are probably the hardest ones. Again, if this was a force situation, <coughs> You'd be looking at it and you'd be like, I don't know what to do. What does it mean that the force keeps getting bigger by a factor of x squared or something? I don't know either, pal. I don't know what to tell you. Um, oh, fart. Oh, jeez. I'm sorry. I feel awful. These should be wise. That's embarrassing. I don't see it sometimes unless I look up on the big board. That's embarrassing. I'm sorry. So check it out. This is exciting. It says that if, this is on page 191, it says that if your initial condition, that is the function that's on the other side over there, if your f of x looks like this, b naught plus beta 1x plus beta 2x2 2 plus dot 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 plus bn x to the n, I guess they use m, I can't read without my glasses on, if you have that guy, then your particular solution should be like this. A naught plus A1x plus A2x2 
squared plus dot 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 plus a m x to the oops x to the m all times um, x oops I'm sorry that's I'm sorry no, no that's the wrong no no there, there it is x to the s power okay so it's kind of a tricky deal that's an s that looks like a five I don't even know what it looks like it looks gross so it looks like okay so if you have that it should look something like that of that format okay so when we work it out you'll see what I mean by that and we'll see where we go now um, what is this s business here this S business is that idea of we need to make sure we account for what's going to happen to all these guys. We're going to multiply through by another power of X, yes? Some other power of X to make this happen. Well, so we have right here an X squared. So in essence, we have this situation. Okay, we have right now, we have F of X is equal to <coughs> a constant. I guess I'll write beta naught. So we have this guy plus this guy plus this guy. That's what we have. So our particular solution will be of the format a of 0 plus a1 x1, or x rather, plus a2 x squared times some x to the s power. Okay? Now, can you think about which power of s, which, which power that would have to be to pull that off? Okay? Well, Think about, think about how that's going to have to go down there. So when you do this problem, you're, you're getting rid of some things. So you're going to be working it out. So we're going to work this out and see what happens here. I think it's pretty straightforward, though, if you come over and look at it. If you start with a polynomial, it looks like this. Okay, That's our f of x over here. Okay? We have to account for some extra powers to pull this off, yes? In other words, my solution can't just be a quadratic, yes? Because if x was a quadratic, the first derivative would be x, the second derivative would be 0, and that wouldn't be possible, yes? So then the question is, we're going to take this guy here, and we're going to multiply it by some x, x to the first, x to the second, x to the whatever power. Okay? Now, again, this is tricky, and it's, it's not something that you're like, can you give me an exact figure? This is one that I... Honest to God, I'm not real up on always because it's not smooth with it because I don't use it anymore. Okay? But what I want you to see is how can we put it together? So here's what I would do. This is how I run this guy. My second derivative, my second derivative at least has to have a quadratic in it, yes? For that to happen, this need, my function needs to be an x to the fourth power, meaning this guy here right here should be a what? Squared. Okay? So in other words, my particular solution should be of the format a naught x squared plus a1 x cubed plus a2 x to the fourth power. Yeah. And if you like a1s, a2s, a3s, or if you like c1s, c2s, c3s, whatever makes you happy, a, b, c's, doesn't make any difference to me. Okay? All right, so what do we have to do here? Well, we need to take some derivatives. So if I take some derivatives here, so this is going to, this you think it's going to take a while. It's not going to take very long, of course. It's going to be 2 a naught x plus 3 a 1 x square 4 a 2 x cubed. This guy, of course, would be 2 a naught, then no x plus 6a1x plus 12a2x squared. Okay, I need, come on, Jay, y3, it's going to be 2, no, it's not, that's a constant, it goes away, stupid. It's going to be 6a1 plus 24a2x, right? And then y4 is? Wait, what happened? Did I lose somebody there? No, I'm good. Right, then y4, uh-oh. Let's see what happens here. y4 would be what? y4 is equal to 24a2. Okay. Now, if you look at this, we know that this guy 
right here, plus this guy, this guy plus this guy better equal what? The original function, x squared, correct? That's in theory what should happen, okay? This plus this should equal that x squared up there. So let's write that out. Well, basically, right? Isn't it x? What is it? It's the y double prime, y to the fourth prime. So this guy minus four times this guy. Okay? So if you distribute this out, you're going to get 24A2 minus 8A0 minus 24 a1x and then plus 12a2 um, no not 12 how much 48 a2x square equal x square true okay that's the hard part we're done now the rest of it's downhill from here okay so look let's start with the x's how many x's do you see over here? Zero. Zero. What does that tell you about A1? <coughs> what does that tell you about A1? A1 had better be zero. Okay? So A1 better equal zero. So, gone. Now, let's look at the x squared. This tells me that negative 48 A2 better equal one. Correct? Right? Because x squared better equal x squared, right? That means that a2 had better equal negative 1 48. That's pretty cool. Now, how am I going to find this a naught routine? Well, these both are constants, yes? How many constants are on the other side? None. So this is going to be negative a half. Minus 8a0 is equal to 0, because those are constants. <coughs> These are constants. There's no x's on them, oh, yes? Mm -hmm. So a0 would equal negative 1 16th, right? That's all this is called, undetermined coefficients. That's all this whole, this whole setup is. It's gross. Life goes on, though. So what's the problem then? My problem above was y sub p, or whatever we said was. It's right here. So what did we say a naught was? a sub 0 is? The negative 1 16th x squared plus 0x cubes minus 148x to the fourth power. Can you do that second one? I'm still not following the negative 1 half. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Well, I don't know. Let's see. Let's find out. So right here, these are constants, yep. and they're equal 0 over there, yes? Uh -huh. So if you put negative 148 here into there, 24 oh, times negative 148 negative 1 half. 24 times negative 148, negative half. Yeah, I guess. They're both 82. They're both 82. Yeah, it's kind of like a system of equations. It is a system of equations without writing it all out. You're totally right. If I had written it out, it would look like this. It would say A1 equals 0, which really means I didn't need it, right, by the way? Which is kind of cool. Uh, and then I would say that negative 48A2, oops, not double A, <laughs> is equal to 1, and then... 24 a2 minus 8 a naught equals 0. So a nice little system of equations. Yeah, I was just kind of doing a piece at a time. 
And again, you don't have to get real good at these guys because I'm not going to make you do very many of them. But I think it's kind of neat to see in a few minutes when we solve this thing, then you're like, oh, that obviously came from this side. This obviously came from that side. All right. Okay. Uh, let's find our particular our con uh, complementary solution. What was our original? Oh, it's y. Yeah, check this out. Y to the fourth. Yeah. Is it plus or minus? Minus four. Y double prime equals zero. How do you solve that guy? How awesome is this? How many solutions will there be this time? How many solutions? Four, baby. Why will there be four? Because it's an x to the fourth power, right? So it's a, it's a quartic. So I could factor that baby out. So, r squared is equal to zero, obviously, here, duh. And then, of course, this guy factors r minus one and r plus one. So my solutions will be negative one, one, and zero, and zero. We're gonna have to talk about that in a minute. We'll have to have a chat about that. I'm not sure what to do about that, Jay. Well, this is the complementary solution we're trying to find. So remember, there's two pieces. So we do this piece here, the homogeneous piece. Well, that's what we're doing right now. This guy here will be part of our other solution. And when I get done, I'm going to add the two of them together. Okay? All right, so let's see. What would this look like? I feel like it's going to be what? I feel like the complementary solution is going to be C1. Well, I'm going to write this way first. C1 e to the t plus C2 e to the negative. Oh, not, they're not t, dumbass. They're x's this time. Pay attention to yourself. There you go. Cool. That part's completely straightforward, yes? Yes. Ugh. Do you remember last week what we said happened when you have repeated roots? I do. Let me jot it down for you. Suppose you end up with r plus 2, r plus 2, or similar. That's negative 2 and negative 2. So our solution will always be of the format x equals, it's going to be c1 plus c2x e to the negative 2, well, not x, you dumbass, t. There you go. I'm having a hard time tonight. I apologize. There it is. That's what will happen. So in the case of the one we just had, when they were both equal to 0, to 0 right there, what's going to happen? You're going to get to the 0t, which is 1. So I don't need it, and so voila is what you will end up with, yes? So on that previous page, I'm going to have plus C3 plus C4T, right? That's that same thing. I already use C1 and C2, though, right? And again, parentheses, E, oh, God dang it, X. I'm back to X on this page. Jeez, I need to quit teaching. Oh. There it is, okay? But I, but I would never write this because this is stupid looking. So I will not write e to the 0x. I'll just get rid of it. And so it becomes basically a linear term here, doesn't it? Yeah. Nice. All right, so let's try this. Once we're here, once we're here, what do we end up with here? All right. So what were our initial conditions? x of 0 was 1, yes? So, wasn't it? Yeah. I think they're all ones. The first two were ones, and this last two were negative ones, weren't they? Yes. So it's one equal. And again, if you're putting in zeros, you're going to get what? C1 plus C2 plus C3, correct? All right. Now let's take a derivative, shall we? If you take a derivative, what do you get? You're going to get C1 minus C2. The derivative of C3 is nada. And then, of course, the derivative of C4x is C4, yes? 
And that equaled 1 as well, right? Did everybody see that? You see? Now, here, watch. What's the derivative of this? So it's going to be 1, C1, e to the, e to the x, yes? But if I put it in 0, it's just going to be C1. The derivative here will be negative C2. Voila. The derivative of this fella is nothing. <coughs> the derivative of this dude is this guy, yes? Now, think about this. After that derivative, after that derivative, what do I have left now? After that derivative, I have this guy. Right? That is the second derivative. Or that's the, that's the yeah, the second derivative, right? So, or no, that's the first derivative. Yeah. That's the first derivative. So let's do a second derivative. The second derivative would be C1 plus C2, but this dude would go away, yes. And what's that supposed to equal? No, weird. And then what's the next one supposed to be? I think the next one would be the next derivative would be C1 minus C2. This is feeling gross and I probably should have stopped while I was ahead, but it's okay. That's troubling in so many ways right there. Those last two bother me greatly. I'm going to write them up here on the board so I can look at them slowly. Somewhere I went awry. I should probably try to find myself. All right. So the original function was c1 e to the t. Uh, this is y equal. C, uh, C2 e to the negative t plus C3 plus C4 t, right? You're using axes, but Oh, yeah. for God. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. It's time to punt. All right, there we go. Y prime. Oh, that's my problem. Oh, I think I know my problem right now. And then uh, C1. Okay. Y3. Equals. Yeah, I bet you a hundred dollars are with the problem now. No. 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 I didn't. <coughs> Weirdo. <coughs> Weirdo. All right. Something is screwy in Denmark. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, well, hmm, oh, no, that's actually okay. You know, it's okay. It freaked me out, but it's okay. Here, let's solve these, shall we, these last two? If we solve those last two by themselves, because they only depend on each other, yes? Then what happens? If you add, you get negative 2 equals 2 C1, right? Yeah? And, then, and there's the last two, that's all I'm talking about right now, right? So then you get C1 is equal to negative 1, right? I just took these last two guys together by themselves. And I just added them together. Yeah, I'm still having a hard time with this whole second part. The derivative part? No, I just like the whole, s but like the whole setup, like C1 okay. e to the x plus C2. So, so I take the derivative here. I understand that, but the C3 and C4. So you don't understand where that comes from? Yeah. Dude, you're the man that gave it to me. You're the one that said, you are the one that said, take C1 plus C2, X, E to the RT, right? That's what you said. You're the one that told me that. I followed your lead. I didn't remember. You told me. And then we said that our R, our double root, was E to the 0, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, E to the 0 is? So this becomes just a linear term. So... That's why I put C3 plus C4X. That's what I put right here. This is the same deal. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay? All right. So look, if C1 is negative 1, 
What does that mean about C2, friends? It's a goose egg. I was concerned. I shouldn't have been concerned. C2 is equal to zero. That's nice. I was a little worried. I don't know about you. Were you concerned? I was bothered by that. Now, brother, where am I at? There I am. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Let's jump in right here. Let's find out. I don't know. I don't know. So then if I plug this in, I'm going to get, what did I say C1 was? So 1 equals negative 1. I said C2 was 0 plus C3. So what does C3 have to be? C3 better be 2, right? By the way, I feel really good about myself because being a textbook problem, I'm expecting nice integer values, aren't I? If these were 6.2 and so forth, I'd be a little concerned, right? However, it's on Jay's test. If it comes out so whole number, it's probably wrong. <laughs> there, there you go. And then and you plug them back in. So negative 1, we said this was 0. That means that C2 is also 4, isn't it? Right? If this is negative 1, this is 0. So then you plus 1, you get C4 is also equal to 2, correct? Phew! Phew! All right, so read me the, the complementary solution then is what? What was C1? Negative one, e to the, e to the x. Oh, sorry, damn it, it's y. I'm so confused, we're almost done. Then you don't have to listen to me anymore. C2 was zero, yes? So then there is no this term, it's gone, right? And then what did we say C3 was? Two. Two, so plus two. Plus 2, well, 2x, two but yeah, but plus 2x. That's right. Whew. And then the final piece of it all put together is you just add this guy plus the other side, which we said was equal to. Somewhere we had it. There it is, negative 1 16th x squared. Minus, what, 148th, x to the fourth. Whew. There it is. Oh. All right. Just look at this thing for just a second, and then we're going to shut up and go away. I'll shut up and go away in just a second. If you look at just this piece right here, it's polynomial. You know polynomials kind of go nuts as you go towards infinity, yes? They kind of do their thing. This one's going to be going down as x gets huge, right? Right, it's going to open down. Who wins? Oh, this this e to the negative, this negative e to the x is also going down. Yes. So when I put these functions together and I put them all together on Desmos, I'm expecting this sucker to drop off like a bat out of heck. Yes. Because both this fella and this guy are both going down, and they're going there in a big ugly hurry. Around zero, something interesting might happen. Yes. Somewhere around zero, these pieces might be interesting, weird, cool, different things could happen. But as soon as x gets any kind of big at all, it's going to get ugly. Let me graph this, and then we'll call it a night, I think. People's eyes are glazing over. Read the room, Jay. It's time to go home. <laughs> Last one, though. I just, want to gra I just want to graph it. What did it say? Negative e to the x? Yeah. Negative e to the x. And then what? Plus, plus two? two? Plus two x minus one sixteenth x squared. One sixteenth x squared minus one forty eight. I was just noticing that it's going up. Yeah. What the heck? Negative. There we go. I told you it should be going down, and it should be going down in a major hurry. And again, I like to look at the graph. I like to look at the functions themselves too, and I always graph them. <laughs> But I look at the graphs initially, and I feel I know what e, negative e to the x looks like. And I know what negative x to the fourth looks like. Pretty comfortable what they look like. So then when I look at them and go, should be like, this function should be going down like a crazy person. And if it's going up or something like that, eh, something's weird. Something's weird. And, and so when you look at this deal, you know, both the x to the fourth and the e to the x are driving. But who's driving harder? Let's be honest. e to the x is kicking x to the fourth spanning. Yes? And it's not about the 148, although that's not helping, of course. But a number times a number times a number times a number 
It's not that big. When you take e to a big number, it gets ugly in a hurry, okay? It whips x to the force, tush, uh, in a race to infinity, all right? Um, although neither of them get that, okay? So, uh, this week again, so you know, that the whole purpose of this section here, which, by the way, if you, one or two of them kick your butt on this section 3, 5, it's okay. I tried to pick ones that work easily-ish, all right? Mostly signs and e to the x's and stuff that we'll actually see going forward. That's what kind of what I tried to pick. Um, whatever. 3-3 three, three is huge. You've got to get that done. You've got to understand 3-3. Three, three. That's a big deal. 3-5, you know, if you struggle with that a little bit, don't, don't, don't be upset about it. It's okay. Life goes on. Um, yeah. I mean, please get help and stuff, but don't like feel like you're a loser because you can't do 3-5. Because, ha, been there, done that. There are literally 8, 7, 87,000 pits to fall in when you're doing one of these things. And by the way, they're all algebra problems that you're going to fall into. Or you're going to push the wrong button on your calculator, or you're going to tie something dumb into the thing like I did here twice or three times over here. So just be aware of that. Okay, You will make mistakes. It's, it's okay. But 3-3 three, three is the part you really want to focus on this week, along with what's in the video. 3-3 three, three is a big deal. It's that. It's the extra, it's the cosines, and the repeated roots ones. Okay? And then again, just make sure Make sure that coming forward, you're right, right on the money with these, um, these second order differential equations. That's a big thing going forward. We've got to have them. So it's got to be smooth. So when we start getting into some more, um, you know, we start, like next week we move into chapter four. Yeah, chapter four. That's systems, I think. Anyway, we're going to do some different things. We're going to come back to these guys. The, my whole plan is we learn a bunch of overview and in depth too and then we get into Laplace later on and we're going to end up coming back and we're going to do some of the stuff that we've skipped or we've brushed over lightly we're going to hit those with Laplace because no one does them just this gross hard way just nobody does that so we'll get a feeling for how it works we'll see how it works we'll see all the kind of the bits and pieces and the application stuff and then we'll come back and hit it with the, the really good stuff later on alright that's all I got I'll shut up can I help? yes where are we at? Do not like. Uh -huh. I Join the club, pal. <laughs> um, I still do not like this part here. I'm not grasping where this whole thing came from. Okay, so so when we did, we did it. We got r to the fourth minus r squared yeah. equals zero. Right? So that's r squared times r squared minus one. So that's r squared and then r plus one. So it's just the regular old midterm right after so right one and negative one. Minutes. Those two solutions. And I got zero and zero again. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so you follow that, right? Yeah. So so remember our functions are of the format C1, e to the t, that's from this guy. Plus C2, e to the negative t, that's from this fellow. And then you're the one that told me this is a double root. So when I have a double root, it's always going to be C, well in this case C3 plus C4. X. Oh, damn it. I, ah! I'm really having a hard time with that. X, X, negative X, X, and then E to the zero X. Okay? That's just how it's, that's how it's played. And okay? when you have a repeated root, that's what it's always going to look like. But because it's, because it's zero, then E to the zero just goes away, right? This is just one. If this had been a 2 and a 2, then this would be e to the 2x, and you'd be stuck, and it'd be a mess. But because it's 0, what, this one? This one? Yeah. But because it's 0, yeah, like that, then this piece just cancels off. So then you end up with this piece right here. Okay. So if you take derivatives, the derivative of this is c1 e to the x. I can, yeah, I can follow that all the way through. Do you follow that? This is just a constant that goes to zero. Mm -hmm. This, okay, mm -hmm. I can follow and that. Like, and I, so, like, you were going to see a few of these on the homework this week. So x to the fourth plus x, or um, this guy, all right, or some similar. So r plus two, r plus two, right? Mm -hmm. So because it's negative two and negative two, it's, it's so that my solution will be c1 plus c2 t e to the negative 2t, right? Yeah. That's all that is. So we're going to see a bunch of those this week, too. Okay. That's all. Okay. But you'll see them. You'll see them in C3. 3.3 3 is repeated roots and sines and cosines, right? Okay. And that's a bunch of that. 
And last week we did 3 1, 3 2. 3 1 and 3 2, where we talked about in the basis of it. And then we did some nice, easy ones where they had like, you know, negative 2 and negative 4, like we did earlier. And yeah. went from there. Um, one other question. Mm -hmm. I will take a penalty if it's possible, or I will submit it now. I only have about 80% of my homework. Well, turn in later. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Even the rest of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like. That's, that's show that's off. Uh, right. yeah. Freaking show off. You're above the average. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, that's cool. That's just, yeah. I yeah, turned in as much as I can. Yeah, that is what it is. I'm missing yeah. section 2-2 two, two, and 2-3 two, and 2-4. That's all right. That's not bad, man. Good for you. So, so, so you know, there's this, <sighs> it's all right. It's, it's okay. It's not. I hate this. This is the first time in my life that I've been, like, I'm snoring right water and barely you. swimming. Yeah. I'm yeah, but never but listen, we're all in it. I, I, will yeah. Say, yeah, I will say this. I will say this. You hold on, like another week and a half, and you will find that, oh, oh, this is not bad at all. I hope so. And when we get to the plus, you'll be like, so. it's easy. I've done the plus before, but it, it was 200 level, and this class is like, no, no, no. I have What's never gotten anything lower than an Wait, A in a math class. You're not going to now, either. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait until you break Look, that look around the room, lady. Yeah, you're good on that. You probably did better. Look around the room. I'm just saying it. it's always on a curve. What are you doing back there, man? You can't do it now that I told you what the answer was. Turn that thing in, boy. Come on now. No, I'm just teasing. This is... It's okay. It's always on the curve. What is this? This was from my previous class. It's... Nice, nice job getting this lost the homework. This is beautiful. Yeah, I, <laughs> I'm close to about that. I got through yeah. 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 two, two three. point one. Is what I got oh, through. Yeah. So what's that? Uh, that's about halfway, yeah. almost. That's, that's a little more than half. Okay. Look, you can't be you breaking your curve for everyone. Do you know his own reviews? Would you? That would be amazing. Yeah. Thank you. You want to turn this? I have a couple of. I will see you in the morning. We'll be next in the morning. Um, just remember, it's always on the curve. Right. You can't have you setting the curve at 7,000 or whatever. Wait, is it, where's your shirt? What? Oh, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, high school kid. You're uh, in high school? You're in high school? Yeah. And you're taking this class? Well done, dude. Good job, kudos. <laughs> dude, I was doing high school? <sighs> yeah, me too. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, we did, we went up through pre-cal. I think I got an A1 term in it. Probably be in the other term. <laughs> I was not the brightest. I had an amazing teacher in high school. Calculus. She was very amazing. It's exciting when you get that. Our guy was good. It's, we just didn't have. It was only. Was well, there maybe eight of us in pre-calculus? Maybe. But we had a small school. Know. When she told me she was like, take the derivative of the area of a circle and you get the oh, equation for a circumference. Uh -huh. 